I had an idea today for a hat. My phone popped up a notification that uh, somebody named Ossified Scrabble Hat favorited something on my Etsy shop. And the idea of a Scrabble Hat just popped into my head and I couldn't let it go. And then later I checked my Etsy and it said that the person's name was actually Ossified Scrabble Bat. So I don't know where I got hat, but now I have to make a Scrabble hat. So I have these Scrabble tiles that I drilled and I think if I thread them on some yarn that I can put them on a hat. So the first thing is to be sure that I can fit this yarn into this these tiles. So let's figure that out. First I gotta find the end of my yarn. I have some needles. Let's see which one will fit. I have to be able to fit the needle through with the yarn on it. That's too big. That fits. Let's see if I can thread that. Brilliant. Okay, so that's going to work. So the plan is to knit ribbing in gray, and then when I get above the ribbing, add a blue strand and just knit along, and then when I come to a tile, it will take up more space than the knitting. So I'll knit a few stitches in just gray and then pick the blue up again and um, just see if I can make it not get... Uh, I want to keep it stretchy. So if I just sewed on the tiles, it would screw up the stretchiness of the hat. So I hope this works. I'm going to start with a kind of complicated cast on, but that extra stretchy. So I'm going to start with a really big needle and then go to a smaller one. So let's see. I'm going to start with the 11s. Actually, I'll use the seven on the other side. Seven eleven. Now I've got me some waste yarn. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. I want this real loose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twenty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. I made this little case for these needles because the one that came with smelled like latex rubber. It's gross. Join these in the round. Can't remember how to hold the damn knit knitting. Okay. Not twisted. This yarn is catching on my fingers. I've been doing all this yard work and not knitting, and my hands are a wreck. All right, now I'll take my actual yarn. Oops. 
one, turn over, hit one, turn over, hit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over. All right, I end with a knit one. Now I slip the knits with the yarn in back and purl the yarn overs. Okay, now this row, see this really sloppy first knit stitch? I don't need that one anymore. I just put that there so the uh, yarn would be in the right place for finishing it later. So I drop this stitch, put me a end around marker, and now with the yarn in front, I'm going to slip the purl and then knit the knits. And when I do this, I flip them because I knit combinations and my pearls are flipped. So when I go by, I flip them to the front. So now they're the normal orientation. Close review. So this one I want to uh, slip my row marker. Now I purl the pearls and slip the knits with the yarn in back. By slipping the yarn behind the knits and purling the pearls and then on the other rows I slip the pearls with the yarn in front of them because the knits are on this side and the pearls are on that side of the tube that I'm making. And the point of it is that it's, uh, it's extra stretchy and it just makes a really nice edge on ribbing. It only works for one by one rib though. I've tried it for other ribbings, two by two and stuff. And it's just not the same. It, it really only works for one by one rib. So even though two by two would be stretchier, I just don't know a good way to start it. So I do this way. Okay, that's the end. So now I just start uh, normal ribbing, so that's purl stitch, purl that, knit one, purl one. Ribbing in the round when you do combination is kind of weird because I have to purl from the back of the needle and knit from the front. So that when it's uh, flat, it works great. To knit this way for ribbing because when you flip it you the, everything's on the right side but this way it's kind of backwards but I'm used to it Don't mind. I can pick out the waste yarn. You kind of do have to pick it out. It doesn't just unravel or anything. Isn't it? 
this sort of a fluffy little goodness. Now I can just go to town. I finished knitting the hem of my hat. I made it two and a half inches, um, which turned out to be about 16 rows of knitting. And now I want to see how big it is. So I'm going to swap out my cable for a bigger one. I think I'll go with uh, 32. Now, all right, that's 25 inches. That's huge. My head is only 21 and a half. So let me try it on my head. Okay, it feels pretty good on my head. Um, not too tight, but I'm afraid that because it's going to have all this stuff on it, it's going to be heavy and want to fall off. So I'm, I might not do as many, I might not make it as slouchy as I was planning on it or because it might not stay on. Back to the 16 inch cable. And I think I'll change my needle size now. I think I'll go from seven. Let's see, 10. I think I'll put the seven back on the left for one round because the ten or the nine's not going to even fit into the knitting. So I've gone up to nine on the right needle and seven on the left for one round, and then I'll put the the other nine on. Okay, now for letters. Okay, I have letters picked out. I've decided not to use all the ones I have because it'll get too heavy. This seems like you know, a lot. We'll see how it goes. I've decided to add some increases on this row. I'm going to put one 12 stitches from the back and then another one 12 stitches from the back on the other side. And I'll do an increase at the back as well. That'll take me from 76 stitches up to 79 stitches. I think I'll switch my seven needle for another nine. And now I think I want to do some more increases. Um, I'm gonna go one, two, six, seven stitches that way. One, two, three, six, seven this way. Then 12, 13. 14, 
13, 14. And uh, I think I'll do another increase in the very back. That way the most slotchiness will be in the back. So that'll be uh, five more stitches. That should take me up to 84, which is what I want. I want something evenly divisible by six for when I do the top. So let's just increase. I'm going to knit into the one on the row below. This feels kind of tight on this needle, too. I might go up to the 10 after all. But at least on this row, it'll be, uh, I think it's good to be a little bit tighter because right at the edge of the hem part, the ribbing, I don't want it to be too loose. This holds the edge of the tight part tight so that then it can expand into the... Flashy part. All right, this is feeling a little tight to me. The, the way the knitting just feels doesn't feel quite right. So I'm going to go up from nine to a 10 needle. This is uh, six millimeters. Nine is five and a half millimeters. So I'm going to knit another round. I, I'm kind of eyeing this to see when it'll be time for a, a row with some tiles. I don't think it's time yet. I want to get a little way. Okay, at the end of this row, I need to switch this nine needle or a 10. Now it should fit in there. I want to try my hat on again. I want to test the size again. Now that we've done these increases and gone up needle sizes, Let's see how big it is. Now it's coming out smaller than before, but that's just because of the bulkier thread, I think. Uh, okay, so so that comes to about twenty-five and a half. stretched out it's about 27 but I kind of want it to be I want to I want to know how it's going to slouch so slouching requires that it not be stretched at all it has to be at its relaxed that size has to be bigger than your head or it won't slouch I think I'm not actually an expert on slouchy hats I'm not an expert on hats at all because I don't live where it's cold I never wear hats like this so relax it seems to want to be about 23 inches which is it'll probably work um would definitely be slouchy on me because my head is only this big around Keep it that way. It'll be for someone with a small head. Sorry, Peggy. You know what? I think this will be easier if I go to a different cable. Why don't I go up to the 20 inch cable? For actually knitting. Okay, take away the 16. I 
like my case that I made better than the old one because it didn't have um, a way to tell which cable was which. This is, I like my uh, envelopes. Okay, that's 14 stitches. I'm going to slide this tie off. I did it's backwards hmm okay so I'm going to go back to the end of the row I was right that that I need the letters to come up from the back but I was wrong that I put them on the yarn that way. I should have put them on the yarn from the other end so that they would come up from this end first. So there was a 50-50 chance I would get that wrong. I guess that's 50% that I got. I knew it would. I wanted them to come up from the back to the front, but I, I didn't even think about how they would face out. That was a huge oversight on my part. Okay, so now when I come up to this knitting, the letter is on the outside. That's great. All right, 14 stitches, push S up here, those words. Now I want to knit the gray yarn into the next stitch, not the blue yarn. I think, how many stitches do I need? Let's do two, two in the gray. the blue and that just lets the blue dangle there and it goes in front of two stitches okay now I'll do both yarns again so when the hat is worn it should the uh, stretchy should it should still be stretchy, and if these get yanked, um, all you have to do is stretch the hat, hopefully, and pull it back to where it needs to be. How do I get the tension right, though? Should I snug it up? I did test that it was bigger than a head, right? So it doesn't have to stretch that much. If I don't put them too close together, I don't know how much to tug it up. Pretty snug. I mean, I don't want these dangling down weird. How many spaces should I leave between the letters? I don't want them banging into each other. That would make a noise and be irritating. I'll just kind of do it randomly. Let's see what we've got. Okay, fun is words. Here we go. Fun is words, y'all. I've left a, kind of a gap at the back for slouchiness. Uh, now I think I'll do a couple more. So I did those two rows 
below the letter. So I'll do two more rows, just plain, before I do another row of letters so that they don't uh, bang into each other too much. And I got a lot of hat to go and not that many letters. I suppose I should calculate how to do it, but that makes it less fun and more like work. <laughs> I'm having second thoughts. I'm not sure this is slouchy enough. Is that going to be slouchy? Maybe. I think it could be bigger. And I'm not sure this reads like Scrabble hat. The tiles are a little too far apart. I don't think I have enough of them. It's sort of more like, it's more ransom note than crossword. I don't know. All right. I'm undoing this. Here's where I cut the um, blue yarn to do the new blue. So that's where I need to start picking up. Now I've got this cable with the, the 20 inch cable with the 10 needle on one end. I'm going to put the five something small on this end for picking up my stitches. I'll just transfer them off of these size ones or whatever these are. These are my needles I keep around just for this exact thing. He's up. I checked all of these to make sure that they aren't words, but I wanted them to sound like words. All right, picking up these letters. Pretty sure that this is the right way to do it because this, they're going to come out facing the right direction. And I want to end with this one. Oh, y and T are all in the same row. Cormel. It's all in one row. I like to play a version of Scrabble where you're allowed to make up words as long as you can give a convincing sounding definition, then you can use a made up word. And they can't all just be pharmaceuticals. This waiver fiagraph lid feastly to cormol fluftine. Okay, I need to do some more increases. I need to add six more stitches. So I'm going to count 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and, make a, and put a mark. And I'm going to do that all the way around. And then increase at each mark and skip the back. So that'll be seven divisions. And uh, I'll do increases here. And then I'll have 90 stitches for going on with. I did some more counting and marking. This is the center front. This is the center back. And this is the center front. And my first letter of the first word is eight stitches past center. So right here I'll put an N when I get to it. So here we go. Looks good. It's got the good spacing from the ribbing. It's going to be great. Right now I'm just going to knit like crazy. 
till I get to the next letter, which is a couple of E's. Okay, here's how the hat's coming out. I've got a couple rows of letters on. I think it looks amazing. I'm so excited. So I think it's going to be slouchy enough. I'll just have to keep going. It's good and loose back here. It's very firm, and I think that's important for making the letters look right. I'm going to have a crossword hat. Scrabble hat. Cute. Cute. I've come to my first long word, cormel. And here's the way I'm going to work the, the yarn for these. So I'm going to take the blue away and knit the gray two stitches and then yarn over the blue and then knit two stitches with just the gray yarn and then yarn over the blue wait I could put the letter in there first the letter over there you yarn over with blue and then knit the gray two stitches move the next letter into its spot yarn over the blue and knit two with the gray so, I'm not, I'm not sure this is, it's not fitting right. I guess that's right. It's just because it's still on the needle. When I take it off the needle, it should all fit. I'm going to have to knit this yarn over by itself. Otherwise, it, it just throws everything off. So it's going to add a stitch, but um, I'll take it away on the next round. Two rows after a long word is a little complicated. What I'm doing is uh, knitting across and the, this uh, stitch I added where there was a yarn over between the letters. I'm, I'm knitting half of it with the stitch before and half of it with the stitch after. So I'm splitting it back to the right number of stitches. So that's that half and there's the rest of it. And there's another one on the other side. I finished my letters and I was just knitting away at the next part of the hat when I decided to try it on the mannequin again. And I have a couple of problems with this design. Um, one is it ends up on the top of her head. It's like it's a ridiculous place to have a decoration because it's you'd have to be standing up when when the wearer was sitting down to even see it. So I was, I tried this on the mannequin again and I got all the letters arranged properly and lined up. Um, but it's, it was difficult to get the de high read to, to line up right. And I think it's because I made a mistake. I think my, um, my H should be starting on this column but I'm off by a stitch. So it's never gonna come out right. And it's just, it's it's a mess. I, and I'm not even sure how the, the D isn't even lined up with the E. It's, I got it off. Uh, it's just, I screwed that up. Uh, but even if I hadn't screwed it up, I don't think this design works on a hat. It would work better on a vest. <laughs> Something where it was on a flat surface, not on the top of your head. You can't see anything up there. So what am I going to do? Well, maybe if the hat was stood up like this, but that's not where the way you wear a hat like this. You, it's supposed to be flat. So, I mean, that doesn't, who wants to wear that? It's, it's dumb. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but the hat itself 
is coming out great. It's going to be a great slouchy hat. Uh, but this is just, that doesn't work for me. Okay, I have a new scheme for the letters. I'm going to put them on um, all in an even fashion from here to here. So I'm going to do 13 tiles on a row, evenly spaced. And then on the next row, I'm going to do another uh, 13 tiles in between those ones. And then I'm going to do a third row above them. So it'll be like a checkered pattern. This is my plan. We'll see how it works. Okay, so that's 19 stitches from the end of round. And now I'm going to knit two stitches with just the gray yarn with the blue in front. So that's one, two gray. Then bring the blue up. And knit two with both strands of yarn. I'll knit that first one and I'm going to snug up the blue and then knit two more. I'm sorry, one more. So there's two and then two in the next letter. I want the blue in front. And knit two with just gray. Then the letter. Got an E up here. I didn't change these. These are the same letters I had done for the crossword. Just uh, I didn't feel like ripping out a whole nother row. <laughs> I probably should have done it and made them random or something. All right, there's the first row of tiles. Um, I think I've, I think this is gonna work. It doesn't really spell anything. Cormoluvtein. It's not a word, so that's uh, that's good. I almost spelled love. That would have been terrible if it had said love right across the front. <laughs> but uh, you could sort of make it and anagram it into love if you want to. Cormoluvtein. Brilliant. I found a mistake. I accidentally did three stitches between these two letters instead of two. And it's very obvious. It's going to throw everything off. So I have to rip back to here. I should probably stop working when I'm tired. Letters are done. I like it. All right, so here's the letter part on the mannequin. I like it. It's gonna look good. It's gonna all the the bunching up will happen back here without interfering with its little letters. Kind of looks like a makes it look like a headband on top of a hat. I finally got my hat to eight and a half inches from the hem, so now I can start doing the decreases. I want to count 15 stitches and then put a marker all the way around so that I have six divisions. 
Okay, there's my counting method with, I use lots of double pointed needles. And then I go in and put in clip markers. I like counting them out beforehand instead of doing it while I'm knitting because I'm terrible at counting. And also it gives me a chance to double check everything is right. I haven't gone off my counts. Right, here at the beginning, I'm going to back up a stitch and do my first decrease at the end of row marker. And this is the way I like to do my hat decreases. I slip the stitch, knit a stitch, and then pass the slip over the knit. And then I slot, move my marker. I'm going to swap the first one for... Uh, one with an extra marker hanging on it, so I know that's the end of row. So on the other side, I knit the stitch, and then this is the, the one that I want to slip over it. So I knit that, move it back to the other needle, pass the stitch next to it over, and then... Uh, A little bit tricky with the double yarn. Okay, so that's my my decrease. So they should both point into the middle. You see how they sort of make a little V. Then I go to the next marker and repeat that, and I'm going to do two rows between decreases and then decrease at the markers again. Okay, so I'm going to slip, knit, pass the slip over the knit, I'm going to swap out that clip marker for a regular one. These poke me, so I don't really like using them when I'm knitting. This is a little bit tricky for um, the direction, but you just do it standard. So just knit it and then pass this over. Don't, you don't have to twist anything or do anything weird. And it comes out, it comes out right. I don't know how. This one always it confuses me. I'm not sure if I should twist it or anything, but it just it's fine just the way it comes out normally. Okay, that's one row decreased. And now I will just knit all the way around two times. And then do that decrease again and continue on with that method and then the very top I'll switch to just doing one knit round between decrease rounds until I have a sort of a nice flat hat top. So now there should be three stitches between each marker and I tried um, I already finished this hat once and undid it and went back again. Um, I did a I decreased all these down to one stitch and because this yarn is doubled like this it looked terrible that's usually how I do this kind of hat but with the doubled yarn it didn't look good so I'm gonna just um, graft these all um, together right now so it'll pull the top in a little bit um, it'll make a kind of a long long line so basically what I got to do is just split these stitches on this third needle onto the other two needles.
Let's see if this looks better than the way I tried it before. Okay, to do a Kitchener close, you start off by going into that stitch purlwise. I made my yarn too long. That was probably a mistake. And this one, knitwise, that's the setup. Let me cut off some of this yarn. This is crazy. All right. So I did my setup, and now I'll just start with Kitchener stitch, which is knit and take it off and purl. That is to say, go in in the purl direction. And on the purl side, you purl the stitch off the end of the needle, and you go into the next one knitwise. And because this is such a big close, I'm going to do my little trick to make the stitches come out even. Right, so go under this needle to the front and take this one off knitwise and go into that one purlwise. Snug it up. Then you go over the needle to the back and take this one off purl wise and take this and then go into that one knit wise. Now go under the needle to the front. Knit off and purl over the needle to the back, purl off and knit. All right, and now the net last stitches. Knit this one off. Go into it knitwise, slide it off, go into this one purlwise, slide it off, pull this through. Now pull this out, and there's your craft. May still need some adjustment. I think it could stand to be tighter. What's that doing there? Now, if I had wanted to, uh, if I had already tried doing a tassel and decided it didn't work, I would have just maybe pulled all this into one little bunch and put a top, put a tassel on it. That would be cute too. But it's heavy, and this hat is already quite heavy, so I just didn't think it would work. So that's why I did the flat on it. <laughs>